he had collapsed. I was, his head was almost knocking on the wall. I put my hand to the wall, and then his tongue was coming out, and I pressed down the tongue for some fresh air. I called the workers who were there, I screamed, and they come and he, he, uh, he got revived, put him on the floor. When he woke up, he said, I want to see my son. That's when I knew something was not going right, because if he had said, call me Mike, that's different. Then he said, call me my son. Two weeks earlier, he had said, if anything ever ha happened to him, I should call Professor Mwanda. So when I revived him the first time, I called Professor Mwanda and I told him, please, I need to see you urgently in my house. I didn't tell him what was wrong. I didn't want to cause an accident. Then I called my son, I asked him, where are you? He said, I'm in theater, what, are you operating or assisting? He said he was operating. I said, please hand over. Your father is not feeling fine. I think you better just come quietly, and he came. So when my son arrived, my husband spoke to my son. The, my son said, okay, fine. I, when he arrived, I said, your father has had a uh, heart attack. And he said, but now he looks better. He said, there's no problem. You must be on admission. Where are your tracksuits? He's the one who pointed out the tracksuits to my son, and then my son started uh, making all the emergency calls. Sat up drunk, talked a bit, and then said he wanted to go for a long call. He was assisted, he went for the long call. Then Professor Mwanda came in and he is the one who said, oh, you've arrived, please check my blood pressure. As the blood pressure was being checked, he had the second attack and we were rushed down there. And I think it must have been one of the most stressful things for my son when he had the third attack, knowing the implications of having a third attack. And when he finally had the fourth one, he passed and all this happened within two hours. Just like a surgeon, operates, finish, it's over. The following day, I dreamt he asked me, the way we used to have our discussions, pulling a seat and asking me, what do you think I would have done in this situation? It was best for you, it was best for me. I woke up and I said, I set you free. That is the story of Judge Albert Omare Magoha. Magoha, son of Magoha, has exited the stage when the ovation was loudest. Thank you for celebrating his life with me. Thank you very much, my sister, for being strong in the midst of so much turmoil. Um, we come to the end now. After this, there will be feeing of the body. There is a, a tent which has been set aside for that, and I like to. Uh, request that as you file out, if you wish to go and view the body, you'll be guided by a team of ushers who are out there to do that function. Let me now uh, request Dr. David Gidanga. I don't know if he's here. To give the vote of thanks and immediately after giving the vote of thanks, will hand the program back to the church. Thank you very much.
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Barbara, Michael, and the wider Magoha family, and distinguished pilgrims. We are pilgrims in keeping with uh, the theme for today. Give them eternal rest, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine on them forever. No duty is more urgent than that of returning thanks. I'm acutely aware of the need to vacate this shrine is a service taking place shortly. That notwithstanding and at the risk of inadvertently missing out a few people, uh, you would be placated by a lady called Doris Day who, who observed gratitude is riches. Complaint 